Hello! As you can see from my background and the fact that there's snow on the ground in March, I'm currently in Canada, one of the three countries that actually cares about the Winter Olympics that just happened. I was watching one of the events, the snowboard cross race event, whatever that means, and there was a close call. They had to sell it using this picture. And I was like, what's with the background? What's with the squishiness? Why does it look weird? Is this even a real picture? So I know the guy clearly won, but I, do I really understand how he got there? The perfect analogy for this is like flushing a toilet. What? Yeah, you know, like I know that if I press the button, the poop's gonna go away, but do I really understand how the water comes down from the tank, does the swirly swirly thing, makes the poop go away? Like, do you? Think about it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, correct. Exactly. So anyway, after some very, 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 very thorough academic research, I found the first Wikipedia article that explains it all. The first concept to grasp is that the photo finish is not a normal photo. While a normal photo is a bunch of locations at one time point, the photo finish is one location at a bunch of different time points. Here, there's an old British guy trying to explain it to a wish.com superman. Every punter who ever backed a horse that lost on a photo finish has asked information please, how does it work? Let's find out the answer with a trainee operator learning the job. Five miniature wooden horses run up to finishes which are never the same. A narrow slit in the camera corresponds to the winning post. The movement of the film, which in the rail racetrack camera exactly keeps pace with the runners, records a separate image of each runner as it noses past the line. So the photo finish camera records not the distance between the runners, but the visual time in fiftieths of a second. The difference between the, like the olden days and right now is that before they used the film with a motor that would move the film across a slit, whereas today we just use a line of pixels and sample it at up to 20,000 frames per second. Okay, but just like the toilet analogy, we don't really understand how we can use this technology to determine the photo finish. So in order to better explain it, I created a mediocre, at best, Python script that simulates the photo finish process using videos from my phone. It goes frame by frame, recording the pixel values of this green line and making them into a picture over time, just like this one. So, <laughs> all that I need to do now is destroy my girlfriend at a skating race. Rude. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. We got to racing, the first I set up the phone and then we started racing and the first time a kid ruined my mojo. So I'm like, nah, okay, we need to start this again. And then Karen decided to go into the middle of my frame and stand there for like legit five minutes. I don't know why I'm salty about this, but she stood there for like five minutes. It was awkward. He's just making excuses. <laughs> anyway, this, we got to racing and this is what happened. Okay, let's watch that again while running the script. Just like the British guy said, each vertical line represents a moment in time. As time moves forward, the picture starts to take shape, with earlier time points being further left. So, to determine the winner, all we need to do is see who appears in the picture furthest to the left. To take this a step further, we can actually use this picture to calculate by how many seconds she won. By simply selecting the vertical line where her hand appears, and by, oh, 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 yep, by selecting where my skate first appears, we can see that she beat me by a little less than a fifth of a second. Okay, that still doesn't explain the squishiness that we see in the picture. The squishiness is a side effect of the speed of the racers. If a racer is going super fast, they spend very little amount of time at the finish line, hence they get squished. If they're going slow, they get to spend more time in the finish line and they, they get stretched out. But hold on to your seats, there's more. What happens if a racer slows down so much that they're basically at rest? Thankfully, we have a great example of this with Karen. If we run the script through Karen's section of the video, we see that Karen basically becomes a horizontal bar. Coincidentally, just like the background. And that's exactly what the horizontal lines are static objects at the finish line. 
We have now reached the Dora the Explorer section of the video, where me, Dora the Explorer, interact with you, the person behind the screen, like a crazy person. I'm going to show you a video of one of these same bolts races, and see if you can determine what the photo finish is going to look like. You were right, if you guessed that the background was going to be white because of the color of the finish line, you can clearly see the vertical lines they used to determine the final result, and you can see some distortions here and there because of the speed of the racers. But the one that caught me off guard was that Omega symbol running across the finish line. It's not Photoshop or anything, it's actually there, part of the data. I'll show you the video again and see if you can spot what those sneaky marketing people at Omega did to get that effect. Yep, there it is. They added a little light strip that changes color just at the right time so that they could get their brand stamped on the photo finish. Sneaky. Sneaky indeed. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, you know what to do. That's it. I like that.